Um, yeah, great memories. I'm obviously very proud um, of the day. It's, you know, when you watch it back and say it's an incredible game of cricket, um, and uh, yeah, you think about that roller coaster of emotions, and and um, yeah, it's quite hard to put into words, really. Um, still, I think it will take time, probably really when you finish your career, actually be able to really appreciate. Um, it. But the goodwill of the nation, the, the atmosphere at Lords that day, that minute after you know we break the stumps and we've won the World Cup, that 30 seconds or minute of is just that pure elation. Um, it's just that feeling will really stick with me forever um, and just an incredible journey of, of four years with the guys to the culmination of coming down to one ball and one piece of fielding and, and uh, could we do it is um, yeah, very special. You just mentioned there the sort of 30 seconds minute after you break the stumps, what do you actually sort of remember about that such a short period of time because it must have been crazy for you? Yeah it was, I just remember running off, throwing my gloves off um, and just feeling so happy and just, um, yeah, I remember charging round, I saw Moe Nally is running past me doing an aeroplane and then I've come around and Joffre was on the floor and, and yeah, just everyone was just having the best time ever and it's just that, I think it really justifies everything that you've, you've done to, you know, you all dream of trying to achieve that and when, you know, sometimes you, you don't achieve those dreams but it really justifies everything you've, you've put in, all the people you've family you've made lots of sacrifices as well it just justifies everything you've ever done to to be um, exposed to that 30 seconds which just makes it all worth it um, so yeah very proud and just talk us just just rewinding a little bit when the ball comes in from the deep and you're the man taking the ball you need to break the stumps to, to win the World Cup just just explain what's going through your head at that moment when you see the ball go out to the deep what's what you're thinking at that point yeah, I just I knew that it'd gone straight to him, um, so I knew that we had a chance that we could run him out. Um, but actually, at that time, you, you're just playing cricket. Everything your instinct takes over. Um, obviously, the consequences are so different, but you're not taught, you're not really thinking about that at the time. Um, you know that just he's going to throw it. Lords is an absolute billiards table, so you know you're going to get a good bounce. Um, and I knew we had lots of time because um, he was going to be out, so I had time to collect it and and. Uh, yeah, but your, your instinct does take over, it's what you've done for so many years, so the magnitude of that moment is nowhere near your thoughts um, at the time, um, but now having um, you know, gone past it, people are saying, oh, how are you feeling, you literally had the World Cup in your hands, but you never, you know, when you think about it, it sort of scares you now after, um, but you know, at the time you're just doing your job. And just again, a little bit before that, obviously the game, ties and you go to a super over um how do you how do you find out firstly that you're going to be batting in that super over and then what are your thoughts as you sort of you know preparing yourself to get ready yeah uh, i sort of assumed i'd be involved in the super over um and then morgs just came and said you're going and um and so yeah and, and actually i was, remember feeling really excited i was frustrated to get out when i did in the game um, and then the super over was like a second chance, which you never get in cricket as a batsman. So um, to be able to go out and play in the super over was, you know, it was like being given a second chance. So I was, I was excited to be able to affect the game again, um, you know, because it's so much easier in the middle and you could yeah, have a, some sort of control as opposed to sitting there and, and just crossing your fingers and, and hoping. Um, but uh, yeah, just excited to get back. I've actually played in, I think it was probably the fourth super over I'd been in. So. Um, but the game has taken so many twists and turns by then, um, all the chaos just seemed to be normal because no one really knew what was going on, um, but at the same time gathering your thoughts and, and I was, just remember feeling really excited to be able to have another go. Did you go into that super over with any sort of premeditated plans in terms of where you think you're going to hit the ball or is it literally a case of ball by ball, just play it as it comes? Um, yeah, absolutely, just ball by ball and, and try and, and I think that's the moment where you just have to try and have as much trust in yourself as you can um, know that you've done the work and um, like I said about the wicket keeping but your instincts take over and you, you know you're going to play um, obviously we talked about left hand being an advantage so that the shorter boundary down the hill so I knew Ben would be on strike um, but really you're just trying to stand there with a clear mind um, and hit it as hard as you can and just quite like to get your reflections on on the tournament as a whole obviously you won it, which is which is the pinnacle. But you, the team really showed some grit, you know, coming to beat India, Edgbaston, and then beating New Zealand in that really important game up at Durham. 
obviously the teams come through a lot in that tournament and obviously come out the other end as winners. Yeah, we did. Um, and I think that's one of the most pleasing things about it, to sort of come through that adversity as such, or some hard times um, and a little bit of struggle. And we had a great meeting at Edgebaston before the India game and guys talked really openly and honestly about how they were feeling, how they saw um, you know, the remainder of the tournament going. Um, and actually we, we talked about it's okay to struggle for something, it's, it's meant to be hard, you know, it's not meant to be easy. Um, and, and the test of a, a real team is can you do it when it's hard? Can you, as an individual, can you stand up when it, it needs to be done? Um, and we went, a, we went away, we, the wickets were different, I think, as, as everyone expected in the World Cup. Um, and our brand of cricket we had been playing, especially in England, we've been playing on great wickets in the previous few years, so we had to adapt a little bit. But the way Bairstow and Roy went out and then played against India um, in the fashion that they do, just made me feel at ease. I remember watching that thing. I'm so glad we've come out in a must-win game and played in this way. You know, the two guys have done that consistently over a number of years. And and it was like, if we do go down in this game, at least we've gone down. And and these guys have set the platform for the rest of us to follow. Um, so I remember being really excited by that. And but the genuine belief of of people was incredible. You know, some guys were just saying, "Well, it's four games. We win that. We win the World Cup." You know, and 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 you're like, that's such a huge statement but the belief of the guys had in, in each other and, and the talent of the team we knew that was possible um, so to then carry that through is, is amazing. It feels like that the almost the excitement rather than the, obviously you're thinking four wins and we can win the thing rather than a defeat and we might be out like that seems like a real change almost a change in the mindset really. Yeah a very different mentality I'd say for England teams um, they have played in the World Cup in, in Australia and, and there's no expectations you're expected to you know, it'd be a surprise if he did well almost. Um, so obviously going into this World Cup with expectations to try and embrace that favourites tag as, as well. Um, but on one hand you sort of feel that, uh, but then on the other hand you know how good you are as a team. And we'd lost two games in a row and that's I think it's the first time we'd lost two games in a row for ages. So law of averages say we've got a great chance of winning the next one anyway. Um, and that's the belief you had in the, in the team and, and a lot of guys in that side have only really known the success of that team. They've never been, of course we've struggled in certain games and we've been on, but the, especially the last two years of that journey, guys have only really been exposed to success and have only expected success as well because we've known what a good side we became. So to have genuine belief in everyone and guys really believing we can win these games, they're all must win games and there's no reason why we can't do it that belief that we could do it is, is um, very strong. And just more broadly looking at sort of what it's done for, for the nation in terms of you know putting cricket in the limelight, hopefully inspiring people to pick up a bat and a ball, how, how much do you think that the, the World Cup win is going to you know really um, inspire people to, to play cricket? Yeah, I, I hopefully have a huge impact. Um, you know, I think we've seen a little bit from you know, guys stopping you on the street and just saying, wow, congratulations, what a game. Um, so and I, it's amazing how it all worked out in the, in the way that suddenly it was the first game on free to air for so long. Um, and to have a game of that manner that everyone could see. You know, some people now think cricket's like that every day, um, which is awesome. Um, and I think in time you'll, you'll sort of understand it. I remember reading some comments or hearing comments from Michael Vaughan saying, you know, they'll understand and, you know, people still talk to him about, I remember 2005, thank you for that, that was incredible. Um, and I imagine the same kind of thing will happen and, and it's a big, you know, the higher goal of, of winning the World Cup is to try and inspire people to play cricket. and. And they're easy statements to, to make at a time, that's what you want to do, but that is what hopefully we will have been able to achieve, not just by winning it, but the style we, of cricket we played um, in the World Cup and before the World Cup. Um, so, you know, the test will be in time, but it's, uh, it's obviously what I want in a lifetime sort of opportunity for cricket to have a, a World Cup and an Ashes in the same summer um, and you know, for people to stop you on the street and, and so it really does recognise that cricket's come to the forefront of people's minds. How much have you noticed that difference in the sort of the public? You know, have you been stopped a lot more, more people talking to you about the cricket and whatnot? 
Uh, a little bit, yeah, I'd say so. Um, and I remember walking, we were in London with my wife, and this was early on in the tournament, and I was saying, I don't know if it's had as a bigger impact you know, on the country as I thought it was. You know, I wasn't expecting it to be like the Football World Cup, you know, the scenes of last summer of people watching it, and it was all anyone could, you know, say it's coming home every other day. But, um, you know, we were talking about that, and I said, I don't know if it's actually having that big impact. And as I was talking that, you know, two guys at traffic lights hanging out the window going, oh, good luck for Sunday, um, we'll all be watching. And she said, well, there's your answer. People are engaged, and I remember seeing the scenes of, of obviously Trafalgar Square. Um, you know, it's incredible to think that it has that impact. Um, so yeah, it's really special. And, and yeah, I think when you saw the papers the next day of, of um, that, so yeah, I think definitely notice that that shift in um, thing. And then that hopefully that will continue for for time. And just lastly, uh, on the World Cup, it's great for you to obviously be able to bring that nice piece of silverware back to Old Trafford and uh, and show it off I guess. Yeah, it's, obviously it was amazing to, to be, um, to, you know, I think, um, actually a great picture at home um, of the, the 99 World Cup, me and my brother a picture with the, the World Cup, we went to, I think it was at Taunton, um, and they got a picture next to it, um, so then 20 years later to have actually won it and, and be able to hold it saying you've won it is uh, yeah, it's just amazing. So um, yeah, very very special. And um, you know, obviously, there's lots of new challenges now. The World Cup has gone, but um, it's very nice to to reminisce about it and, and uh, relive those memories.